So first off, a big thank you to one of my subscribers whose name is John for sending me the link to this video. This is a very good video. So what I would like to examine in this video is how Muslims misinterpret the person and Godhead of the Holy Trinity and how their view of the Trinity actually reveals their wretchedness. So I want you to listen carefully to how this man reveals his erroneous train of thought in regards to the Trinity. Then I'll go ahead and give my piece after. You said that you found the doctrines of Christianity incomprehensible and absurd, yeah? And you also said that you found uh, you had some kind of issue with Christianity because of the Genesis narrative and how in incongruent it was with scientific narratives. You went to a pastor, you said, or a church cleric yeah. or something, and then you left the church. Now, I've yeah. got a question. Do you still have the same position or have you changed your position? Well, I've changed my position a lot. I was only 13 then, you know, oh, and I, okay. was, I was caught up in, in the battle, you know, to, insofar it was manifested in me when I was 13, I was caught in the battle between enlightenment rationality and mm. traditional narrative belief. Yes. I had yes. no idea how to reconcile those two things. Do, do you feel like you can do that now? I'm doing my best to reconcile. So let me be yes, more and I think, yeah. well, I certainly can do it a lot more than I did when I was 13. Let me give you an example, right? This, this point, when you were 13, I think you were thinking straight. I'll be, I'm sorry to be very straight. <laughs> let, let, for, it's hard to believe yeah, that yeah, someone yeah. is disagreeable with you yeah. as you no, would manage you were, that. Yeah, because someone with an IQ of 180 or whatever you have, yeah, someone of your intelligence, when you, were, when you were 13, you probably had an IQ of, I don't know, 120 or something, yeah? So you, was, you were operating like my friend over here, Ali Dawa, so it's on his level, right at the age of 13. But what I was going to say was that, you know, the reason why I think you are... Because look at the Trinity, for example. Look at the schisms. Now, this goes to your specialism. The, the idea of three all-powerful entities, that Jesus is all-powerful, that the Father is all-powerful, the Son is all-powerful, and the Holy Spirit is all-powerful, but there's not, all, what, uh, there's not three all-powerful, there's one all-powerful. You have one ultimately willing being, which is a person, which is Jesus, and another person, which is ultimately willing, which is the Son. The Quran says about this, it says, in chapter 23, verse number 91, it says that Allah has not taken any son and he, does, he did not have any creator with him. Had that been the case, they would have stripped one another for what they, they would have competed and tried to outstrip one another for power. Meaning, so do you just hear what this man just said? He pretty much just exposed exactly how a lost, unregenerate religious man would think regarding a false view of the Trinity. You just heard him say that to Muslims, the Trinity doesn't make sense because if there are three persons, that wouldn't be a good thing because those three distinct persons would basically wage war against each other for power of the headship. Now that right there is exactly how I would think a lost Muslim would think regarding the Trinity. It just reveals how wicked our train of thought is as sinners. That the three distinct persons of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, would actually wage war against each other for power. That's exactly how a sinner would think because that's exactly in our natural state how mankind is. We wage war for power, for money, for land. That's just in our nature to kill. But what he doesn't understand is that it is one God in three persons. Why would God wage war against himself? And although the Trinity is a mystery that I can't even explain perfectly, it's another one of those things in which by faith we're not called to explain it perfectly, but to believe what we see and read in scripture. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit make man in our image, the triune God who has always for all eternity existed in perfect unity and harmony within the Godhead, this one God in three persons, God the Father, the Son, and God the Spirit. God the Son eternally begotten of the Father and God the Spirit eternally proceeding from the Father and the Son makes man in his image. This triune God makes man in his 